that time for us to uh, release the teaching that the Lord has for us in store in this place today. All right, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and put our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious Father, we come before you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because you are wonderful. We thank you, Father, because you are one. You're one with us. We thank you, Father, because you are the Alpha and the Omega. Without you, Lord, we cannot do anything. Father, we thank you for your Son because it is your Son who cleanses our conscience from dead work so that we can serve you, a living God. Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for what Jesus offered us at the cross. He redeemed us, Father. He redeemed us from spiritual death, Father. He redeemed us from sickness and, re sickness and disease, and he redeemed us from poverty. We thank you, Father. We don't take that lightly. We're so grateful to you. We're so grateful to you, Father. And we're so grateful to your Son. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say amen and amen. It is our custom here, as you know, at Seeing the Impossible Faith Center to give God a wonderful worship and praise with our hands. That means give him an applause. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the title that we started Sunday, uh, the title or the aim is uh, The Life Jesus Came to Give Us. The Life Jesus Came to Give Us. Stephen, it's nice to see you in the house of the Lord. Praise God. And it's nice to see you up and about. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're welcome, my brother. Amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. Praise the Lord. Let's go to John 10.10. 10, all right? Let's go straight to John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. Amen. Let's go there. John 10.10. 10. Let's read. It's time to read our word. And let's learn something here. John 10.10. 10. Praise God. John 10.10. 10. Some of you know this by heart. Well, that's good. Let's see if we can learn something new out of this. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have my New Living Translation open, and I'm going to open up also my King James. Praise God. And let's see what the Lord has to say to us. That's John 10.10. 10. The title that we're teaching once again is... The life Jesus came to give us, you know, there is a life that Jesus came to give us. And we need to learn what life is that. Praise the Lord. It started all in Galatians 3.13. It started at the cross. Like I said before, when he redeemed us from sickness and disease, and he redeemed us from poverty, a spirit of poverty, from poverty. Praise the Lord. And then he redeemed us from spiritual death. Amen? So in John 10.10, 10, in the New Living Translation, it says, the thief, which is the enemy, uh, purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. Then Jesus quotes and says, my purpose is to give them a rich, satisfying life. I love that word. I want you to write that down if you're taking notes. Let the Spirit of God... Uh, rearrange your mind today because honestly we've learned that you've never had a spiritual problem you've had a thought problem praise God once you once you get your mind in order everything else will be in order praise God amen so you never really had a fight with the spirit your, your spirit is fine your spirit belongs to Jesus it's our mind that we have a fight with all the time it's our mind that gets out of order, and we have to bring it back into order. Well, in John 10.10 10 here at uh, King James, it says, The thief, again, cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So we know now that the work of the enemy is to what? Is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So if you have experienced any of those three in your life, that means the enemy has something to do with it, okay? Praise the Lord. So Jesus, on the other hand, came to do this. Jesus came to give life and that we might have it more abundantly. That means 
an extraordinary life. Praise the Lord. A life that is, uh, if you're taking note, a life that is flowing. A life that is fulfilling. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A life, in the Hebrew they call it the shalom life. Which means the life of peace. Which is nothing missing and nothing broken. Praise the Lord. And that's the life that Jesus came to give you. He came to make you whole, complete. It's like a pie. If there's a slice missing, you don't have a whole pie. But Jesus came to give you a whole pie. Praise the Lord. All right? Now, what we need to do is to learn to adjust. Once we learn how to adjust, adjust what? Our life. To whom? Adjust our life with the life of Christ. See, Jesus always adjusted himself to what the Father told him to do. See, Jesus always demonstrated the Father's life. That's why Jesus was able to say, what you see me, what you hear me say, what you see me do, I have heard and seen my dad do. Praise the Lord. I'm just imitating my Father. That's what he's saying. So, as, like Paul said, as you follow me and I follow Christ, We'll get to that place. See, that word follow is adjust. That word follow is to make your life or copy. Your life should be copying their life. Whose life? Jesus. Can we say Jesus three times? Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's, let, me, let, me, let, me hear it. let me hear it for the Father, Jesus. Let me hear it for the Son, Jesus. And let me hear it for the Holy Ghost, Jesus. See? See? See, the only way you'll be able to adjust your life to the life of Christ is when you walk in order. When you walk in order. How do I walk in order? Walk in the order of Christ. Praise the Lord. That's a good word to write down. Walk in the order of Christ. Walk in the order of Christ. See, see, Jesus had an assignment. And his assignment was from God. You know what was Jesus' assignment? To be the son of God. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Jesus had an assignment. His assignment was to be the Son of God. Praise the Lord. And we have an assignment. Our assignment is to have the mind of Christ. Oh, praise God. See, Jesus always did it with the mind of God. See, Jesus, I'm giving you little nuggets tonight to help you come out of your dilemma. Jesus always did it with the mind of God. So you and I need to do it with the mind of Christ. When we do it with the mind of Christ, praise the Lord, we'll be all right. But if we continue doing it out of the mind of the flesh, guess what's going to happen? We'll continue living out of the flesh. See? If we, if we continue doing out of the mind of Christ, if we do it out of the mind of Christ, and then we'll have Christ's results. We need some Christ's results in our life. How many of you understand that God is a restorer? How many of you understand tonight that God is in the business of recovering? How many of you understand that what was broken is getting fixed right now in the name of Jesus? Praise the Lord. See, that's the the Lord that you serve. Praise the Lord. That's the Lord that you serve. (laughs) I'm teaching myself happy here. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Now, the life uh, that Jesus 
came to give, he had to give up something before he can give us what, he, what we have now available to us. See, he, I'll say it again. Jesus had to give up something. The son came here with an assignment, and he had to give up something. A lot of us want to serve the Lord, but we don't want to give up something. I guess I'm the only one who should raise my hand here because I understand that. There's a lot of things that he tells me, I want you to give it up, and I still don't give it up. Because why? Because I'm walking out of order. I'm not walking in order. When I surrender that, then I can pick up the mind of Christ and move forward. Now, let me, let me give you three, three aspects that Jesus had to give before we can receive the life that we have now available to us. The first aspect was, aspect was there was the spiritual death. Write that down. Jesus experienced a spiritual death. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus experienced a spiritual death. Number two, he experienced a physical death. All right. So there was a spiritual death experience that he had to go through. And then there was a physical death that he had to go through. And then third, there was a spiritual banishment from God, meaning there was a separation. There was a time when Jesus was going through what he was going through, praise the Lord, that he, uh, he thought the Father abandoned him. I'm not getting any help here, but that's all right. Yeah. So we can really say that Jesus tastes death for every person that is watching me on YouTube, on the Internet, that is those that are here right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus tastes death for every person so that we might have life. Praise the Lord. So, if he went through spiritual death, that means according to Galatians 3.13, I was redeemed from spiritual death. I was redeemed from uh, poverty. And I was redeemed from sickness and disease. So you, I don't need to have none of that stuff on me. And if I do, if that thing does trespass me, then I have a mouth to proclaim the word of God. See, that's your medicine right there. The medicine that you've been taking from that bottle is helping you out, but really the medicine that you need is from this bottle here. Once you start proclaiming that you are healed, your sickness and disease has to leave your body. Now, you don't have to shout because I'm teaching good, but that's just the way it is. That's the word of God. Praise the Lord. And proclamation, proclamation is necessary. Proclamation is to decree. To decree what? To proclaim what the word says. That's what I need to be saying. That's the only way you're going to overcome the devil, you know. You're going to have to start learning how to proclaim things. That's why Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says, and you overcome the enemy. How do you overcome the enemy? Who's the enemy? The devil. You overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of God and your own personal testimony. So when you testify, say, you know what? They try, to, they try to hurt me. They try to do this. But guess what? I'm still here. Amen. Right, Steve? I'm here. I'm here. Praise the Lord. I'm here. I'm here. I'm still alive. Physically, that is. And spiritually, I hope so, too. Praise the Lord. And now you're getting your mind in order. Amen? And that's how you get the problem out of your life. Get your mind in order. Get your mind in order. You've never had a spiritual problem. If Jesus is inside of you. How can you have a spiritual problem? 
You love Jesus. You praise him. You worship him. When you come to the house of God and you hear the right, the right praise and worship, it's just something. Ha- when you read the Bible, it just, and when you talk about it, just something good happens. But when I'm out of that presence, I'm out of that environment, gosh, things be happening to me. That's your mind. Get it in order. Now, see, you got to understand, he went Three aspects that he went through. He, he experienced spiritual death, and he experienced physical death, and he, and he experienced banishment from God. That means separation. He felt lonely. All of us here have experienced one of these aspects. So now, what is available to me? This is what is available to me. Can I tell you what's available to you and me? Okay, the first thing that is available to us is spiritual life. We don't have to go through spiritual death if Jesus went through it for us. So we have spiritual life. Somebody say spiritual life. We were brought into that place called spiritual life when we became one with Jesus one with God, and one with the Holy Spirit. So, I and you being in union and fellowship with God has given me a spiritual life. Good, shout, good place to shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. I don't have to feel... Like sometime I feel. Through faith in Christ Jesus, Jesus was joined to the Father. And he lived for the life of the Father. That's very powerful. You need to understand that. That's why there was never a boring moment for Jesus because he lived a life for the Father. He says, I come to do the will of my Father. Not my own will. Finding faults on everything you see is not the will of the Father. We need to be grateful. Don't look at what you don't have. Look at what you do have. And remember when you didn't have it. Now you have it, so celebrate it. So write this down. If Jesus lived by the life of the Father, then you and I need to live the life of Jesus. Praise the Lord, somebody. Now things start changing. Now things start changing in my life. Now I'm, start, I'm starting to get a little understanding. I'm starting to get a little understanding here. Okay, I, okay, this is wonderful. See, this is, oh, this is great. This is great. This is, okay, I know how to do it now. The only thing I have to do, remember a couple of years back, uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 years, there was little, uh, little uh, 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 slogans and, 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 and little uh, uh, cliches uh, uh, w, 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 what would Jesus do? Remember that? Well, no, you need to have that in your heart. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Would Jesus curse the person out? <laughs> would Jesus spit on the person when they see him? Poo, this is for you. I'll give you the evil eye. No. No. No, 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 no. No. Jesus imitated the Father. And because Jesus imitated the Father, Jesus was able to carry out his assignment here on earth. And now it's available to us, spiritual life. Not only spiritual life, praise the Lord, but we have a physical life. This is something personal now. You need need to write this down. We have spiritual life. And we have a physical life. It is your responsibility to take care of your physical life. It is your responsibility. It is your responsibility. It is my responsibility to take care of my physical life. This body is not mine. It's a temple of the Holy Spirit. Even though I use it like it's mine. You know that. 
So the, I have a physical life. Because we have a life in a physical body. Is somebody, is somebody learning something from this? Amen. So I have a spiritual life. And spiritual life represents uh, fellowship with God, if you're taking notes. When you say, I have a spiritual life, when you say you have a spiritual life, that means you have fellowship with God, Bobby. I have a spiritual life. I have a, spir- I, I have a spiritual life. You're telling people, and even if they don't understand, but this is what you, that's what you're saying. That's what you're meaning. I have a relationship with Jesus. I have a relationship with God. Because if I can't have a relationship with God, then I can't really have a relationship with you. I just gave you a key to get you better. When I, start having a, when I stop having a relationship with God, everything around me starts stinking. Can I teach it like I feel it, please? Can I teach it like I feel it? So the only way that I'm going to be able to have control of my surrounding and my environment is when I don't give up my fellowship with God. My fellowship with God is so important for me to be able to impart into someone else, for you to be able to teach or tell somebody else. Don't think you got it going on because I'm telling you what you learned last year ain't going to help you now. So you got to learn every day. You got you got to apply yourself to something new. My father always used to say to me, my father, my carnal father, son, when you open your eyes, you're born again. Every day you open your eyes, you are born again. You are born again. You are, you're born again every day. So don't worry about yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Worry about today? No, I don't worry about today. Because the Lord says don't worry. He said cast your cares to him. He cares for me. In the book of Peter, he said that. I believe 1 Peter chapter 5, isn't it? 1 Peter chapter 5. He said cast your cares to me. Because guess what? Because I care for you. So he's saying, son, you can't handle that. Give it to me. Don't worry about that. Worry about doing my work. That's what you need to be doing. So, okay, number one, I have a spiritual life, and that relates to fellowship with God. Number two, I have a physical life. And that's related to the resurrection. Oh, God. Say, I have a resurrected life. Say it again. I have a resurrected life. I have a resurrected life. Praise God. I've been resurrected, praise the Lord. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead raised me from the dead, praise the Lord. And Jesus tastes death for me. I don't need to taste death. When I give up the, when I give up the chariot, when it goes back to dust, I'm going home, baby. I'm going to heaven. You're going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Don't let your mind tell you you're not going to heaven. He's, he, your mind is always warring with you. Your mind always want to remind you of that old dumb sin you did yesterday. It's gone. It's done. He's forgiven me for all my sin. You don't understand what, you understand what that means when he said, I have, Deacon George, I have forgiven you. That means he's forgiven you from the sin in the past. He's forgiven you for the sin of today. And he's going to forgive you for the sins of tomorrow. So who are you to be judging yourself? If God don't judge you, why you want to keep judging yourself? I'm higher than God, that's why. No, you're not. The devil's a liar and Jesus is the Messiah. I want to do what the Word says, Stephen. I don't want to do what my mind says. My mind keeps me in trouble. The Word get me free. So, what, what is the purpose of this gospel? That Jesus went through spiritual death for me. So I have spiritual life. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus went through a physical death. So I don't have to go through physical torment. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord in here. Start changing the way you live. You change the way you live. And you'll be more happy. Praise the Lord. Now how do I change the way I live? I have to change the way I think. When I change the way I think, my mind keeps getting me in trouble. I feel like Jack Benny. My mind keeps getting me in trouble. When I change the way I think, I'll change the way I live. When I change the way I think, I'll change the way I live. 
I am responsible to keep this mind in check. I've been given power to conquer my mind, to tell it, shut up, you talk too much. So write it down. You have a spiritual life, which is connected to fellowship with God, and then you have a physical life, which is connected to your physical body. Your bodies are mortal body, but one day at the resurrection, your body will change into immoral. Your body's going to change. From moral to immoral, praise the Lord. From moral to immoral, praise the Lord. Go to go to First John. Go to First John. Go to First John. Let's get some word in here. Go to First John. First John. First John chapter one, please. First John. Go in the back of the Bible. First John. Thank you, Jesus. First John chapter one. <laughs> mm, praise the Lord. He said, he said, I've given you my spirit. God said that. I've given you my spirit through my son. My son made it available for you to have union with me and fellowship with me. My son did that work. He said, my son did that. You didn't do anything to earn this. In fact, when I see you, I see the blood. That's all I see. I see what my son did for you. So you are connected to me, says the father, because of my son. I wonder who's his son. He's talking about Jesus. Even though we are all sons and daughters of God, he's talking about his beloved son, Jesus. His one and only begotten son, praise the Lord. His name is Jesus. And I'll keep saying that name to you until you get free. Jesus, that's his name. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's getting good. Thank you, Jesus. So here we go. First John chapter 1 and go verse 3. Let's see what it says. He said, we proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. So you are in union with the father and with the son. You are in union with the father and the son. Praise the Lord. You are in union with the father and the son. Praise the Lord. See, you in union with him. Let me explain to you what he's saying. <clears throat> the reason why you are in union with him is because you've been giving a spiritual life. And you have to be resurrected from your debt life. That means that someday you said, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth <clears throat> that Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me and everyone I see. <clears throat> and I've been raised from the dead. <laughs> you want me to prove it to you, don't you? I keep looking, you all looking at me like, what's he saying? I'm going to prove it. Go to Romans chapter 8. I know exactly where we're going. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. That's where we're going to go. Let the people of the Lord say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> that's right. <clears throat> Romans 8, 11, that's where we're going to. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Romans 8, 11. Thank you, Lord, is right. I love this gospel. Praise God. I love it. You're in union with it. You're one with it. Praise the Lord. You are in union with it. 
That means it dwells inside of you. Praise the Lord. What do union mean? Union means it dwells inside of you. It's inside of you. Praise the Lord. Everywhere I go, when I'm in the shower, is in there with me. When I'm asleep, is there with me. When I wake up, is there with me. When I'm with me, myself, and I, everywhere I go, that thing is with me. I can trick you, but I can't trick it. And it's not an it. It's a person. It's a he. It's the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. It's with me. Even when I'm stinky, it's with me. Thank you, many when I do something that's not right. Okay. You there? Romans 8, 11. I'm there. You're there? The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Whoa, there it is. And just as God who, who, who? The Father raised Jesus, raised Christ, Jesus. Now, hold on a second. You see that right there? Christ Jesus. When it talks about, when the Bible talks, puts the word Christ first, it's talking about the, the anointed one, the Messiah. When it has the word Jesus Christ, it's talking about salvation. Okay? But when, it's, when you see first Christ Jesus, that's talking about the anointed one, the Messiah. So in, in other words, we can read it like this. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. See, he's talking about salvation now. See? There you go from the dead, lives in you as just as God raised the anointed one from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. You can underline that. It's living with you. Either you feel him or not, it's inside of you. When it's windy, can, can you see the wind where it's coming from? Well, you know there's wind. It's inside of you. Praise the Lord. So what am I trying to say? Right now. Not after the resurrection. Right now. It's inside of you. You, need, you hear what I'm saying? And you need to respect it. Ha! Praise the Lord. How about that, Pastor Mary? You need to respect it. You need to respect it. You need to honor it. Praise the Lord. If you want more access to it, you need to honor it. Listen to this. Honor is a seed for access. If I disrespect you, you ain't going to let me get near you. If I respect you and honor you, you will allow me to have access to you. You say, oh, he's a nice guy. You know, I like, I like when I'm in his presence. He makes me feel good. He's funny. You know, gosh, he respects me. He, he tells me all these good things about myself, oh, about myself that I can't see myself. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See? Honor is a seed, and you sow it, and it brings you access. <laughs> Dishonor. It's a seed also, and it cuts off your access. And the reason why, oh, 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 I hear the Holy Ghost talking to me. Can I talk to you what the Holy Spirit is saying to me? The reason why you don't have it is because you have disrespected. You lost access to it. People place this thing, people place this thing, you start honoring it. You honor it. You honor what he gave you. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I don't care if your car is 40 years old. You honor that car. You take care of that car. You thank God for that car. That car will last. <laughs> I'm talking to people in here. You thank him for that one job, and you see, he'll send you another. The attitude of gratitude. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your moral body. He's talking about physical body. He ain't saying spiritual body. He ain't saying your spiritual body. He's saying your physical body. Through his spirit. Come on now. I'm trying to get you healed right now. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to get that blood pressure right for you. I'm trying to get that cholesterol right for you. Praise the Lord. That back pain you feel. That feet, you know, the feet hurt. The feet hurt. Well, get up and start talking to them feet and say, Jesus gave me physical life. 
So you trespasser, you got to leave my feet alone right now. See, you got to get radical, praise the Lord. The only way you're going to be able to overcome the enemy, you're going to have to testify personally to what the word says and the blood does for you. You don't understand. You got power. You plead the blood of Jesus on those feet. I get pain too. I go, oh my God, this L5. And I caught myself. I was saying, I'm going to have to live with this for the rest of my life. And the Lord rebuked me. He says, why? Because Dr. Moss told you? Because somebody told you? I'm telling you, give it to me. Well, let me tell you, son, that God be the glory. God be the glory. That's right. But I know why, because I'm testifying different. I'm testifying that I'm healed. When the pain comes, I'm healed. I'm not, I'm not healed. That's what your mind says. Your mind saying pain, pain, pain. Your body saying pain, pain. Your spirit say, I don't feel no pain. Your spirit say, I don't feel no pain. So you need not to feel pain. Do you know what the blood did for you? You need to know what the blood did for you. First of all, if it wasn't for that blood, your sins would not be forgiven. It was the blood, man, the blood. So anything that I'll do tonight or tomorrow, it'll be forgiven. I don't have to live confused. Oh, I don't know. Just shut up and get it in order. One day at a time, that's all. One day at a time. Now, you need to sit down and put a plan together. Want me to teach you how to do that? Raise your hand if you want me to teach you how to do that. I've learned how to do it. I've learned. She's there. I live with her. Everybody knows that. I live with her. (laughs) And she lived with me. Go to Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. Let me show you. Proverbs 16. I'm going to keep giving you this until you get it. Proverbs 16, please. Proverbs 16, praise the Lord. Hallelujah is right. I love the Lord. I lo- see, see you, 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 you serve the God of hope. You serve the God of hope. Hallelujah. And I'm praying right now for you here in this pulpit. I'm praying that the God of hope will fill you with joy, peace, And believe that you can abound and you can do all things through the power that is within you. If you believe that, say, I receive it, Pastor. I receive it. I receive it. I need to come here tonight. I receive it. Praise the Lord, somebody. Give him praise, glory, hallelujah. (laughs) Praise and glory, praise the Lord. Praise and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 16. Praise the Lord. Let me do this, Lord. Proverbs 16. Ah, yes, Lord. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's right. My God. Okay. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it, Lord. Yes, sir. I see it. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. 16, Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Commit your actions to the Lord. Bobby, I love the King James. It says, commit your action to the Lord and your thoughts shall be established. That means that, write this down. Carrie, write this down. You need this, honey. This is what the Lord is saying. 
your receiving has something to do with your thinking. Your receiving has something to do with your thinking. Amen. How you receive has something to do with your thinking. If you ain't receiving right, that means you ain't been thinking right. Uh, See, that's it. Commit what? Commit. Commit, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Commit your actions to the Lord and your thoughts, Stephen, will be established. That means that what you want to do will, will, will come to pass because you're committing yourself, you're giving that to the Lord. You're saying, if it's your will, I'm having that. And he said in John 10, 10, we just, we just read that. He said that he comes what? He said he comes to do what? He said he comes to give you abundant life, Jesus. Now go to, go to uh, Proverbs 20, verse uh, 30. Praise God, somebody. Thank you, Jesus, I'm telling you. I'm teaching myself happy. And I got to finish up. I got to finish. Go to, I got to go here too in the King James because this is different. God just gave me this. Uh, Proverbs 20, verse 30. God just gave me this, and this just stood out like this. And he said, give my, give my people this. I said, okay. Oh, boy. Here you go. Here you go. Here we go. Now, in the King James, it says, the blueness of a wound cleanses away evil. So do stripes the inward part of the belly. Now, let me, let me give it to you in the New Living Translation. What it's saying is, physical punishment cleanses away evil. <laughs> Such discipline purifies the heart. Now, some of us have been going through some crazy physical punishment. We don't need to be going through that. Jesus went through physical death for us. I feel you getting delivered tonight in Jesus' name. Now, this is what he wants you to do. Go to Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. This is what he wants you to put on tonight. Proverbs 24. Go to Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Man, time goes so fast. Especially when we're being taught right. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, that man been spending time with the Holy Ghost. You know I have. (laughs) You live with me. You you live with me. (laughs) Woo! I feel happy. Proverbs 24, verse 3. This is what he wants you to have. Here it goes. Through wisdom is an is in house built by understanding, it is established. Let me read in the New Living Translation. This is good. A house is built by wisdom. And it becomes strong through good sense. Number four. And by knowledge shall the chamber be filled. If you want your house filled, you got to start getting some knowledge. shall the chambers be filled with precious and pleasant riches. That means that whatever you have, you're going to be so grateful that you're going to feel so rich with it. Come on, somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. If you got one shirt, you're going to say, my God, I'm so, this one shirt does look good on me. 
Praise God. I love it. Somebody say, I love it. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 4 in the New Living Translation. Through knowledge, it is rooms, its rooms are filled with all sort of precious, riches, and valuable. The wise are mightier than the strong. My God. <laughs> you mean I don't need to be physically strong? I just need to be what? He says the wise, everybody look at this. Look, look, where, what are he talking about? He's talking about this right here, look. He said wisdom is the principal thing. He says the wise are mightier than the strong, and those with knowledge go stronger and stronger. Your information has not been really doing anything for you. Information means that you're filled with info. You've been informed. Knowledge means you're living that information. So you got to go, you got to, ooh, I feel that. You got to go from a place of information, translate yourself into a place of knowledge. That means no more revelation come from information. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to live in a place of information. I got, to live in a, I got to live in the place of revelation because revelation brings my impartation. <laughs> so without my impartation, check this out, Deacon, I ain't got no manifestation. See? Your revelation is bringing, everybody look at me, look at me everybody. Your revelation will bring some impartation. Impartation will allow you to get manifestation. Oh Jesus, I love you. You know, you got to feed the spirit and the body and the mind, honey. Just be happy where you're at. Just be happy where you're at. And God will increase you. And God will increase you. Write this down. Write this down, please. I'm doing my planning. Write this down. I'm starting to do my planning. I'm starting to do my planning. Oh, my God. Come on, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm starting to do my planning. And I'm going to prepare my field. Your field is what he's giving you. I'm going to start doing my planning and preparing my field. Now watch this. Before I build my house. Oh, Jesus. I got a word for somebody else. Before you build your business. That's what you're doing. <laughs> that was for you. I'm doing my planning. Now, how does my planning succeed? Proverbs 16, commit your actions to the Lord, and then your plans will succeed. Amen. So you got to do, you got to do the planning, but you got to, he didn't tell you, he didn't say, look, I'm going to sit down with you, and I'm going to show you a portfolio <laughs> so that you can make some money. No, the portfolio is there in the spirit already. He says, Daddy Don, Deacon Don, I want you to start doing some planning, he says. And then you and Tina, Mother Tina, are going to prepare the field. Before you build this house, I want you to commit your actions to me. And then your plans will succeed. So before you build a house, if you do that, Bobby, Carrie, if you do that, then you will build a house for God. Then you build a house for God. Okay. We got to build this house for God. We got, we got to build this house for God. In fact, we got to tell our Sunday people, y'all got to visit us on Sunday. It's different. We got to tell the Sunday people, 
we got to build this house for God. See? This thing, this ministry, Stephen, has been marinating long enough. He said to me, put some legs on it and let it go forward. I'm four days a week here now. It started too. Now I'm four days a week on this property. Twice a week, I'm in the dojo, the karate dojo, which is a ministry and outreach of seeing the impossible. Yeah. Teaching the kids and adult, yeah. moving meditation, self-defense, whatever they want to learn. Breathing. You could you just come and sit down in a chair and I'll exercise you. I'll teach you how to breathe through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And I'm twice a week here. That's four days a week now. And to God be the glory. I know what the Lord is doing. Do you know what the Lord is doing? Because <laughs> I know what the Lord is doing. So I can say, like that old pastor of mine used to say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid to proclaim the word of God. Don't be afraid to what you have to face. Write these three words down, and then we're going to close up. Praise the Lord. And, uh, yeah, that's what he wants me to do. I want you to write these three words down. Amen. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Father. Father, I thank those that you put before me, and I thank you for those that you have put in the past, and I thank you for the man and the anointing that is, that is in front of me now. Praise the Lord. I thank you for my upline. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for my upline. I thank you for my spiritual dad. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See? I thank you that I have life. I thank you that I have a resurrected life. And I thank you that I have eternal life. These are the three things you need to do. You need to face it. Write it down. Face it. Whatever is coming against you, just face it. Don't be afraid of it. Face it. Then ask God to show you how to fix it. Ask God to show you how to fix it. Hey. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You need to face it. And then ask God to, to show you how to fix it. And then you need to do one more thing. You need to forget it. <laughs> face it. Fix it. And forget it. Remember, you have divine healing. Praise the Lord. Because you have divine healing, says the Lord, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this humble ministry, you also have divine physical strength. Praise the Lord. Say that with me. I have divine healing. You, that's weak, man. Say, I have divine healing. You got to let him hear you. You got to let him hear you say it. Praise the Lord. Hey, glory. You got to let him hear you say it. I have divine healing. I have divine physical strength. And, and I have a conclusion. My body's going to change. Amen. Amen. Let's all bow our heads and... And close our eyes and, and, and pray this prayer with me. And I'm going to talk to the viewers. This teaching, the aim of this teaching is the life Jesus came to give us. I got two, three more series. Don't miss it. God's going to talk to you. This is what he says. Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus. And I thank you for the work on the cross. Because Jesus tastes taste death for me and for us, I have, everybody say this with me, I have life abundantly. I have a resurrected life and I have an eternal life. Say Jesus was cut off by death that I may have abundant life and be joined to God eternally in Jesus name amen remember viewers Jesus is the answer Jesus is Lord God bless you see you soon amen